Hey guys, what is up? Extra Man 2 here. Today I will be teaching you how to become a Skyfall Master. I will be showing you today 12 tips that will make your game just that much better. Just a little disclaimer, um, I am not a professional at this game. These are all my personal findings that help me become better at this game. And, uh, well, they might not work for you, so, you know, just keep that in mind. Starting us off at tip number one is understanding how elytras work. If you've played any games with wingsuits, like Just Cause 3, you'll see that you gain height at the cost of speed, and vice versa. Now, this graph shows you right here, if it's kind of hard to explain, you gain speed when you lose height, when you kind of dive, and uh, you gain height when you lose speed. And that's when you point straight up, and then you start to drop. So you need to find that balance. And something that uh, will really help you with that is the next tip. Our second tip is probably one you've already heard, but that is testing it out and flying around. I tell um, most of the people I play with, specifically Russell, to, um, you know, if he's having trouble with the elytra, I always go into an amplified world. And I'm going to show you the difference between an amplified world and a regular world in this next clip. All right, here we are in Minecraft. Um, so this is what you're going to do. You're going to go to single player and create a new world. These are all the worlds that I've actually just spent time in. Now, you want to go to creative and, uh, well, make whatever you name you want. But when you go to more world options, type in amplified, which basically means that it will amplify the seeds so that the world will be bigger and larger. And you'll see what it looks like in the end. So when I click create world... This may take a while because amplified means that it's bigger, and obviously bigger means slow computers will suffer. Now here, we're going to spawn in the world, and we can get our elytra from the transportation tab. But the nice thing about amplified worlds is that they are really, really big and tall. Unlike regular worlds where it's rather flat and mountainous, this one has many layers such as that. You see over there, weird random structures. But a nice tip for this is a command, which is TP tilde, which is, I'm going to show a picture, it's the top left button on your computer, tilde 512, which is the cap for a number in chat, and this, which means that's TPing you really high up. And it's nice to go into third person if your uh, render distance isn't that long. But yeah, as you can hear the wind might be blocking my voice, I have no idea. But this is really nice, so going underneath things is really fun. And practicing, understanding that thing. Also something you might want to notice is your feet. If you are going too high up, your feet will begin to go like this, meaning that you have little speed. But you will gain height. This is where you want to be, steady and enough height, yet enough speed at the same time. Now on to our third tip. Alright, I'm in game and I'm going to explain the third tip, which is the slowdown. So the slowdown is basically, well, self-explanatory, it's the slowdown. Now, see where my game thing is, at the bottom right there? Oh my gosh. Was not expecting this, go away. See at the bottom right here, it says slowdown, which I've noticed when I first started playing the game. It's kind of hard to land um, on an island, uh, which is something that you kind of need to do every single time you... Uh, go in a game. So this basically just slows you down in the air. If you time it correctly, you can even land on things that are further away, just like that. And this uh, really increases the um, amount of uh, chance you have of landing on islands. And uh, eventually, once you get like 100% landing all the time, uh, then, well, you're good to go. Now for our fourth tip. This tip isn't as much of a tip as it is just kind of a awareness of something, which is as you can see from the screen, trying third person. Now, one of the things that third person allows you to do, like I explained in uh, an earlier tip, is that you can see your legs, which can help you with balancing speed and height. Um, this also gives you more spatial awareness, but one of the downsides is having to switch before combat, unless you can do <clears throat> third person combat, which I cannot. Um, I would also suggest binding F5 to something that's closer, I have mine bound to C. Um, if you have Optifine, I move my zoom to R and my uh, F5 to C so that it's uh, closer and easier. Uh, I don't have abnormally small hands either, and F5 is still a long stretch for me. So just keep that in mind. 
another tip is um using the elytra on the ground now whenever you're running from somebody um you'll notice that they'll might sometimes be faster than you depending on their if they're doing this trick or not this trick can really increase your speed on the ground which is really important if you're getting away from somebody in the middle where there's no middle ring or uh, if you're getting away from someone on a big island um and that's using your elytra on the ground so the way you do this is basically by just running um, and jumping but spamming the space um, now this next tip isn't as much of a tip as it is just to um, remember something and that there's no shame in running um, I know a lot of my videos I ridicule people who run away from PvP because I think they might be cowards but in reality what are they gonna do to you I cannot stop if I have diamond armor I cannot stop a random person in leather from just flying around and being totally safe the whole game there's no way for me to stop him so running really i mean even i do it sometimes and i ridicule people so i'm kind of a hypocrite now that i think about it but there's no shame in running now the next tip is understanding the gear in the game um a common misnomer to people is that swords do more damage than axes in 1.9 and uh it kind of confused me in the beginning but axes do Le more damage than swords and the only uh, advantage swords have are is that they can block so if you are a block hitter then go sword if you are a um a person who just goes in for the hit and doesn't care about uh you no know, blocking then get the axe now the wooden axe and the wooden sword the wooden axe will win but a stone sword and a wooden axe the stone sword will win so the axe in each tier will be better than the sword in that tier. Now the best weapon you can get in the game is a iron axe, discluding the diamond sword that you can get. The diamond sword is the best, but you have to craft it. Um, so that does it for weapons. Now the armor, um, well, most people know this, but chain is better than gold by not that much, but it's still better, mainly because. Um, it does more literal protection, and, uh, gold can also break, and it's happened to me before, uh, if you get a partially broken piece of gold, uh, armor, then, uh, it'll probably be gone by the time you finish the game. Our next tip is, um, kind of one that, uh, you might already do, but, uh, I noticed this right in the beginning that I didn't eat enough, and, uh, eating is extremely important. You only gain hearts... Uh, you gain half a heart every four seconds. So depending on your play style, that's a lot or that's a little. Um, if you play offensive like me, that's kind of a lot because, you know, eight seconds. If I lose four hearts, I'm going to have to wait 32 seconds, which is half a minute. So always eating is uh, really important. Also, some sort of sub note to go with this um, is eating uh, smaller portions of food. If I eat a steak and I'm only missing one little uh food bar what's the point of that i wasted three food bars so eating things like the raw pork chops carrots um even uh cookies pumpkin pies those kind of things um can really uh help you uh serve your food the next tip is going through extra rings now what this does is um two things mainly it gives you an extra speed boost um I've noticed that uh, sometimes I'll say, oh, I don't need to go to this ring, and if I mess up on the next ring and I start to fall, I won't have the speed that I could have gotten from that other ring. Or in some cases, um, I just you know, skip a ring because I don't need to, but um, I could have gotten an extra speed boost and gone to another island. So um, going through extra rings <clears throat> can really help you. Um, it also, the second thing it does is actually take out more rings for other people to use. I have uh, killed uh, people with diamond armor by stealing rings from the bottom island. Um, it's a basically foolproof tactic unless you fall yourself. But going through those extra rings really does help you out. Our next tip is um, something that I like to call don't be a bottom feeder. Now, the bottom is um, one of the uh, most dangerous places in uh, game mainly because rings are uh, kind of not plentiful um, and falling is a kind of high probability plus there's no ring in the middle for you to escape from other people from 
So the thing at the bottom is that you don't want to go there. There's no chest down there. There's a crafting table. But uh, always remember that there's a crafting table at the very top middle island. Which is way safer and way better to go to anyway. And uh, the bottom is really the place to go to PvP. Unless you go there for a specific reason. Like a supply drop or if you're the last person. If you're the last two people and you want to kill the other dude that's at the bottom. Go down there. It's not like you can't touch it. It's not poisoned or anything. Uh, just being wary that there's nothing down there. And uh, I've spent a half a game searching the bottom. Thinking that there were chests in it. And got killed. Because, you know, I the bottom is a very ruthless place. And it's basically just PvP Island. Alright, now our next tip is one that's kind of considered an opinion. To me it's not. I have a lot of facts to, you know, bring this back. But... It is the fact that the stunner kit is, in my opinion, and most of my friends too, uh, is the best kit. I'm going to go through each kit and show you what's wrong with each of them. So, beginning with the, um, the, uh, jouster. Yeah, that's it. Um, the jouster is good, but it's kind of contradicting itself. It's not really actually good. Never mind me saying that. Um, basically, the problem with it is that if I want to go for the kill, what's the point of hitting my enemy off if I want to actually get them? Uh, like, it, it's kind of, you know, wrong. It doesn't work. If I want to win, I have to get kills. And the Jouster does not help you get kills. It helps you kind of just, like, um, hit them off for no reason. I don't know why you'd want to hit them off if you're actually playing this game. Um, the next kit, the Aeronaut, is a pretty cool kit. But, um, the problem with it is it takes a little bit of time to master. And if you don't have a good computer to start with, uh, there's no chance. Because you need to be able to time that hit really well. Um... With, with the Jouster, uh, the Aeronaut, sorry, um, it does 40% more damage, which is not, like, that significant and worth all the time it takes to really master that. But if you want to use it, be my guest. Um, the next kit is the Deadeye Kit. Now, the Deadeye Kit is a, is a pretty cool kit. Um, I will be honest, uh, I sometimes use it. But the problem with it is that it's kind of misleading in the fact of how, uh, how it um, really like homes in on people it doesn't actually home in that much it goes four or five blocks within if you shoot four or five blocks within the target it'll hit it not as much as people would think and uh to be honest it's actually pretty hard it's it's not as easy as it leads on now the last kit the speedster kit is also a pretty cool kit that i use um but the 10 percent boost is not worth um what you get with the stunner kit which could be a insta kill at the bottom so you know uh, it's, it's really also just however you play. If you play with the Jouster kit, whatever. If it works for you, whatever. For me and most people, I assume Stunner kit works the best. But, you know, that's just my personal opinion and uh, well, so other people's opinion as well. Thank you guys for watching. This concludes my Skyfall Tips and Tricks video. Please give it a like if you haven't. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and put some comments down below on any tips that you think I missed or tips that uh, you could add to this list. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, peace be with you.